Each and every human being is instinctively seeking happiness. Seeking this happiness is one of our greatest goals. But perhaps sometimes we have trouble attaining this lasting happiness because we may not understand what it truly is. The economic systems we live in today are modelled on the basis that happiness is to have more. This is based on the notion that there will always be something that we do not have and acquiring this will make us happier. This has misled some people into believing that happiness is attained through having more money or more power or more fame. But is it not strange though that those people who are the wealthiest, the most powerful or the most famous are amongst those who seem to be the least happy? Muhammad, peace be upon him, was God's final messenger to mankind. He was the perfect role model in every aspect of life. With regards to being happy, he said, true happiness does not mean having many belongings or possessing a lot of wealth, but true happiness is the contentment of the heart and the enrichment of the soul. Unhappiness is an enslavement to desire. As an example, those who seek pleasure from the likes of alcohol or drugs will tell you that the pleasure is short-lived, that happiness is nothing but an illusion. Once the pleasure dissipates, withdrawal kicks in, and the person enters a vicious cycle of lasting misery. Sometimes, in order to achieve happiness, people attempt to follow complicated paths. Happiness cannot be achieved by satisfying the body, but rather, happiness can be found in the solace that comes from being upon the truth. Islam lays down a number of rules and regulations to guarantee man's happiness in this worldly life. At the same time, Islam emphasizes that the life of this world is nothing more than a means to attain the hereafter, the true life that we must all strive to attain. In God's final revelation, the Holy Quran, God says, but little is the enjoyment of the life of this world compared to the hereafter. True and lasting happiness is in paradise. Paradise is a place prepared by God for those who believe and do good. It is a place where one can have all that he desires and more. It is the only place where one will find peace, tranquility and security. And it is the only place where one will be completely free from fear, anxiety and pain. Islam teaches us that happiness in this life is acquired through accepting the truth of the oneness of God and the belief that He will resurrect us and hold us accountable for what we do. Muslims attain happiness through knowing and worshipping God and they maintain this happiness through remembering Him and doing good deeds. God says in the Quran, whoever does good, whether male or female, and he is a believer, we will most certainly make him live a happy life and we will most certainly reward him with the best of what they used to do. What are we doing here? And where are we gonna go? It's like we just woke up one morning and then it's welcome to the show. Don't ask any questions, just go with the flow. Make as much money as you can and try your best not to get broke. Copy everything you see on the TV from the hairstyles to the clothes and don't think too often, just do exactly as you're told. And if you ever get confused, then just turn towards the alcohol. You'll still hear your thoughts, then just turn up the radio as you learn to live a lifestyle of drugs, sex, and rock and roll. But in all honesty, I just need to know, is there more to the cycle than growing and getting old? Living and dying just to leave behind a happy home and a whole lot of property that somebody else is going to own. I just really need to know before the casket's closed Cause I'm not willing to gamble with my soul Nor am I ready to take any chances These are just simple life questions And I'm just searching for some answers Like what are we doing here? 
and what is our purpose how did we get here and who made us so perfect and what happens once we go or is this world all really worth it questions we don't answer because apparently we don't really have to there's no purpose to this life and our existence is merely natural then in that case please let me ask you did you create yourself or was it somebody else who had fashioned you cause you're a being that's impeccable faultless and unparalleled you're a product of supreme intelligence and I'm merely being rational For there isn't a camera on this earth that can come close to the human eye Nor a computer that can compete alongside the human mind And if the whole world was to come together we wouldn't be able to create a single fly So many signs yet we still deny As science tries to justify that all this could come from none When it's a simple sum, zero plus zero plus zero cannot possibly ever give you one So from where did all this order come? For everything has its origins, a maker, a creator of its own I mean the only reason you're watching this video is because somebody had to press upload So we can believe in the big bang but I'd rather believe in he who caused it to explode Allah, the creator of everything along with every single soul The ever living, the master, the only one who is in control Unlike his creation, beyond our imagination And no, he's not a man nor does he have any partners in association He's on his own And no, he did not ever leave us alone Just like every manufacturer, he left us with an instruction manual The Quran and Islam and I'm sorry to jump to conclusions but it's the only one possible The only definition of God is the one and only supreme being It's logical A book with zero contradictions With miracles that are both scientific and historical All revealed over 1400 years ago Like the detailed description of the human embryo The descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran Cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th century To the mountains as pegs holding firm the earth below And the two seas that don't mix in a complete separate flow To the planets in orbit Alternating night and day as they stay in flow The expansion of the universe and the creation of everything from H2O To the stories of the past and the preservation of Pharaoh To identifying the lowest point in the land where Persia defeated Rome The gushing fluid that created man in the glands between the ribs and the backbone And not a word has changed, it's still the same So please explain how all this was known over 1400 years ago To a man who couldn't read or write as he would recite whatever the angel spoke And if you still don't believe, please try to come up with something that's even close But you can't, so we took God as a mockery and his messengers as a joke Muhammad could not read or write How's somebody who can't read or write gonna start a religion? Dismiss the scriptures as legends and tales of the ancient folk As we live life according to our whims, desires and hopes Saying this life is the only home we will ever know We will live then die then simply turn to bones Yo, lo Correction, after the grass dies the rain arrives and it regrows And Allah promises to do the same thing to your very soul And bring you back from your very fingertips to your toes As the all-seeing supreme being watches us so close And we are surely being tested In our wealth, our health and our self And everything that we've been blessed with So believe for we will surely be resurrected And be brought back to our Lord And account for every single deed As he hands us our books and orders us to read From the bad to the good and everything in between You yourself are sufficient for your own accountability So don't be mad at me You are the one who thought he wouldn't come back to me I gave you a whole life long to search after me 
but you were busy in all that which was temporary, so read. And glad tidings to all those who believed, and if you disbelieve, read. And don't let that day be the first day you find out what your life really means. Read. This book was revealed to an illiterate prophet. That means an unlettered prophet. 1,424 years ago, it has been. It was memorized over a period of 23 years. It was revealed, and it was memorized by the prophet himself. Peace and blessing be upon him. And it was memorized by several of his companions, and he reviewed. Their memorization of it, and the angel Gabriel that brought it to him reviewed his memorization of it. And so, when the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, passed away, there were several companions of his that had memorized this whole Quran under his review. And since that time, millions of Muslims have memorized the Quran in every age. And I almost guarantee you. That there's probably at least two or three or four Muslims in this gathering here that have memorized this whole Quran or the greater portion of it. And another miracle of this Quran that cannot be said for any other book is that if all the Bibles, if all the Talmuds, if all the Hindu scriptures, all the Buddhist scriptures, if all those books were thrown in the ocean. If all those people of those religions agreed, throw them all in the ocean, and then we Muslims, we threw all the Qurans in the ocean also. The Quran is the only one that, in a matter of a day or two, would be brought right back because it has been memorized from cover to cover. I say to you, brothers and sisters, and our guests, you you owe it to yourself. Punch in the name Quran, Q U R A N. Punch it in, and see if you can compare. See if you can find a scripture. See if you can find a writing. See if you can find a document that compares with the Quran. You will not. You owe it to yourself to read this powerful scripture. Don't ignore it. You cannot afford to ignore it. Either it's profound, either it's from God, either it is comprehensive, either it is as I say it is, or it is not. At least you should investigate it. Why should you be blind to something that might have that kind of impact on your life and the life of others? After all, this is not the legislation of Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. It is the legislation of whom? Almighty God. There are so many people who don't know anything about Islam. They don't know what it means. And they have so many questions like, where did it come from? Is it something new? Well, Majid, what we should all know is that Islam is a universal religion which was prescribed by God for all of mankind. It was revealed 1400 years ago in the land of Arabia, the very land where we're sitting now enjoying this campfire with this uh, coffee that we have here. It came and was centered around a profound message. Uh, but this message is not something new. Islam is a relatively young religion compared to other religions, but the essence of its teachings is a continuation of a message which was propagated by the first man that set foot on this earth. Prophet Adam, peace be upon him. And this message continued on with all the other prophets, Prophet Noah, Prophet Moses, Prophet Jesus. And then in the end, with the final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And the message was a plain and simple one. Worship God one in his oneness alone and not to associate any partners with him. Yes, Islam is not named after a prophet or saint. Instead, it's a name which was chosen by God Almighty. Linguistically, it has a deep set of meanings encompassed into one word. 
These meanings include submission, surrender, obedience, sincerity and peace. Islam is not just a belief system based on academic learning. In fact, it's so much more than that. It's a comprehensive and practical religion providing a complete way of life. And also from a spiritual perspective, Islam helps us to understand who we are, why we are here and what our purpose is. Islam also teaches us and helps us to understand and helps us to prepare for what will happen to us when we die. Islam, when it was first revealed, it was literally a liberation for the people against oppression. The oppression of the rulers and their beliefs that they imposed on the people. I mean, here the message was clear. It was fighting racism. It was fighting injustice towards women. It was giving the rights to the orphans. It was dealing with equal, equal opportunities for everyone. As Muslims, we were all equal. Yeah, you can imagine the advent of Islam must have been a beautiful thing for the people. It promoted truth, justice, peace, love and equality. It's of no surprise then that the message of Islam spread so rapidly across the world. It reached the far reaches of Western China, across Northern Africa and into Southern Europe. It even reached uh, as far as uh, Portugal, your country, Anas. Uh, and you'll find up until this day, you have people coming from the rich, the poor, the young, the old, black, white, American, European, different social classes from different religions. People are coming into the religion in their thousands because it's a message for all of mankind. The teachings of Islam, they are as relevant today as they were 1,400 years ago. In fact, Islam has all of the answers and solutions to all of our contemporary problems. Take, for example, the oppressive nature of the modern banking system. Islam presents a healthy alternative with its economic, social welfare system, which provides a honest, fair and healthy model for the creation and distribution of wealth. It's such a shame that uh, Islam is not well known or so misunderstood today. I mean, the Islamic way of life, it's so pure and wholesome and has so much more to offer. Uh, and if we look at its divine teachings, uh, you'll find that they are a source of spiritual comfort, of morality and guidance. So guys, we must remember that God only guides those who want to be guided. So we must ask God sincerely to be guided. So he grants us with eternal happiness. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألهاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين ثم لتسألن يومئذ عن النعيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألهاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين ثم لتسألن يومئذ عن النعيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألهاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين